Today I'm working on placing the spar cap assembly from the previous blog inside the forward and aft spar. The upper and lower stabilator horns will be positioned and final drilled. Please remember that this is a how I did it video, not a how you should do it video. Use your own judgment when constructing any aircraft. Yes, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. But before I start on anything, I want to make sure that I get a really good understanding of how all this goes together. The inner spar cap assembly has pre-drilled holes in it that should match up with the forward and aft spars. And this can be confusing. The first time I tried it, things didn't match up. I kept turning things around until I got all the holes to match. Now I'm going to follow the instructions. Before I take this apart, I'm going to remove a little bit of the blue film to expose the metal. Then I'm going to make a mark from here, down to here, and on to the aft spar. Then when I put it back together, I'll know that's the way it goes. Now for some blue film therapy. Time to round off the edges. The forward spar is 8 feet long. It didn't take me long to figure out that I needed to open the garage door in order to get the job done. This is one of the reasons to round off the edges. Right. Time to Clico the forward and aft spar to the spar cap assembly. This is the horn attach angle. It's the only part that gets riveted to the spar assembly in this part of the building process. This is the horn doubler plate that goes under the upper horn. 
The upper horn is placed on top of the doubler plate and is matched up with the pre-drilled holes in the plate and the spar. The doubler plate is then clecoed to the spar assembly with number 30 clecos. Then the horn is clamped to the horn attach angle. The pre-drilled holes in the top and front of the horn are clecoed in place to the spar assembly using number 40 or 332nd clecos. The horn pre-drilled holes are a little larger than the spar assembly holes. The plans call for a number 20 drill bit to final drill the front and top horn holes. I just happened to have a number 20 drill bit that I used on another RV project. My trusty old pneumatic angle drill will come in handy. Now for a final drilling with the number 20 drill bit. Now to drill the holes in the front of the horn. So now I need to match drill the rear hole in the horn to the horn attach angle using the number 30 drill bit. The instructions suggest a 12 inch number 30 drill bit that is flexible enough to curve while drilling. I'll use my pneumatic angle drill which fits perfectly to get this done. Now I need to change out the number 20 bit for the number 30 bit.
Now for the bottom horn. I just repeat the steps that I used in the upper horn. Now I'll match drill the rear hole of the lower horn into the horn attach angle as before after I change back to a number 30 drill bit. Now I'm going to Clico the other outboard horn attach angle to the spar assembly and final drill the lower horn to the angle. Now for the last step in this section. Final drill the cable attachment holes using a number 12 drill bit. And there we have it. The next thing is to take it all apart and deburr. Then we're ready for the next adventure. <laughs>